Well, good morning again. Welcome to life. It is a privilege to be with you today. And, uh, and I just want to uh, hopefully lead us to the future in the Word of God. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you that your goodness, your mercy, your grace it has never failed us. And it's not going to fail us. And help, help us to just remember and be reminded today that we can hope and have faith in you and trust in you. And Father, just to latch on to your promises and live them out. In Jesus' name, amen. To the future. We need to go to the future. Do you remember where we were a year ago? Here we were on the doorstep of a brand new decade, 2020. I mean, what could be better than 2020? New vision, new hopes, new dreams, and yet it seems like all hell broke loose. But let me tell you something. God's word is forever settled in heaven. And it's our job to populate the world and speak his word in the earth so that we can bring heaven down to earth. And it's a good time for us to be reminded of his word today. The big idea of today's message is the promises of God are sure. And there is a sure way to embrace them. You know, God's word is, it's, it's a rock. It, it cannot be moved. No matter what happens in life, that rock is sure. It is steadfast. And what we need to do is plant our lives on his word. Now, we've had a lot of shaking this last year. This, this year has been um, a, an amazing year. But I, I'll tell you what, as I pondered here at the close of 2020, getting ready for 2021, 20, as I pondered everything, I realized, you know what? God didn't blink. God's word didn't stop working. As a matter of fact, I think if something did happen, I think that we human beings on this planet we were reminded that we need a higher power working in our lives. We need the power of God. We need the word of God working in us and through us. And, uh, and so hopefully today that, uh, that's going to stir us to a fresh hope and faith and uh, just a peace, a peace that passes the understanding. You know, when, when all hell is breaking loose around us, God's word will provide us the ability to walk forward with peace. That's what his word promised us. We're going to begin in Isaiah chapter 42 today and look at verses 9 and 10. It says, everything I prophesied has come true. And now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. Verse 10, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing his praises from the ends of the earth. Sing all you who sail the seas, all you who live in distant coastlands. As I was reading that scripture, I actually thought verses 9 and 10 don't look connected. They look like they're talking about two entirely different things. The first verse that we read in verse 9 talks about how God's word has come true. His prophecies have come true. And it says, I will tell you the future before it happens. And then verse 10 goes right into saying, let's sing a new song. What's up with that? Well, I believe it's time for a new song. It's time for a new tune to play. And I think that what happens is, is God is showing us that we have got to get on board with him and we've got to sing a new song, as it were, in tune and in harmony with him, with his plans, with his purpose. Instead of looking around and going, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, we need to be speaking life. We need to be bringing light in the midst of darkness. That's what faith does when it works in and through us. Jesus said, we are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And he tells us to not hide our lantern or our light under a lamp or a, 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 a bushel. I don't know what that is. But nevertheless, we're supposed to shine. Yes, it's dark. But yes, God's word is is alive. It's bright. It's ready to shine. So is the word of God believable? 
I mean, if you stop and look at the headlines in the news or, or, or watch the news on TV, you would wonder if God's word is believable. Are God's promises believable? Well, I love what Hugh Ross said in his book entitled, Fulfilled Prophecy, Evidence for the Reliability of the Bible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read just a small quote here. It says, unique among all books ever written, the Bible accurately foretells specific events in detail many years, sometimes centuries, before they occur. Approximately 2,500 prophecies appear in the pages of the Bible, about 2,000 of which already have been fulfilled to the letter. No errors. It's one thing to believe biblical prophecy, and it's another thing to act on it. And that's what we really want to focus in on today. How do we act on the word of God? How do we act on the things that God used men and women to prophesy and writ, wrote down on the pages of the Bible? How do we put that into action? Well, we embrace the promises of God through prayer and through praise. We just sang a song that says that we serve an unstoppable God. When we sing songs like that, we're reminded that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. No matter what's happening around me, God's word is unstoppable. It's we who do the stopping. We're the ones that will camp and hunker down and forget that God is looking for somebody to take his word and shine and share and show people how much he loves us. So, we were in Isaiah. Isaiah 42 and 43 uh, is, is, uh, is a, a popular scripture to read during the holidays uh, where, where the prophesying of the Messiah, the coming Messiah, uh, and, and it speaks directly to the promised deliverance of the Jewish people from the Babylonian captivity that they, that they lived under. And it says here, today we can embrace the same promises of deliverance because the Messiah has come about 2,000 years ago or so, and he will come again the second time to save us. I want to show you a scripture in the New Testament that talks about that. It's in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. It says, so also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, not to deal with our sins. You just, is that, that's good news. I want to stop right there. Jesus isn't coming again to deal with our sins. He took care of that already. He nailed the sin of humanity on the cross. He took it upon himself. And so we are right with God. It's, it's something that we receive by faith. We just go, wow. How did you do that? Why would you do that for me? We believe in him and we are born again. That's what happens. So he already dealt with sin. He already dealt with the issues that separated us from a relationship with him. But he's coming back and it says to bring salvation to all who eagerly wait for him. I am eagerly waiting for Jesus. Now, how is faith in biblical prophecy like Jesus coming again? How is that relative to our daily lives? I mean, we hear stories like this. We read the Bible. We hear stories like this in church. How is Jesus coming again relevant to my daily life, to my work life, to my home life, to my play life? Well, it's relevant because when I consider the scriptures that says Jesus is coming again, it impacts my priorities and it influences my pursuits. Everything that we are pursuing in life, whether it's a goal to own a business or to raise a family or to to buy a home, a cabin in the mountains, or whatever, whatever the plans, the dreams, what, what are those dreams that you have that you harbor? What are the things that you want to accomplish in life? Think about it for a moment. 
It's good to have dreams. It's good because those are the things that help us go into the future. They help us to press in and press forward instead of just kind of like looking back and wondering what happened. So it's good to have dreams. But you know what? When we take spiritual principles and, and the truth of the Bible and the prophecies about Jesus coming again someday soon, and we take that and we have that in the back of our, our minds, it's, it, it's buried and it's hidden in our hearts, and when we pursue things here on the earth, that perspective influences how I pursue those goals and those dreams. I, I want to do it in such a way that it, that it brings glory to God. I want to I want to I want to manage my my business in a way that shines a light and and honors him. I want to raise my family in a way that that people can look and go, "Wow, what's their secret?" It's Jesus. And he's coming again, and I hope that I can hear those words, "Well done, good and faithful servant." That's going to the future with a perspective on the prophecy that Jesus is coming again. The future is always bright when we are looking through the eyes of faith. In Isaiah 43, the prophet tells the people to move on from the past. And as good as God's deliverance was taking the children of Israel out of Egypt, delivering them from Pharaoh, he had even greater things in store for them. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, it says, but forget all that. Well, I, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm just going to stop right there. God doesn't want us to truly forget all that, but he's really saying, focus on the future. Move forward. But forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. You see that? For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. When we move into the year 2021, I believe that the way that we're going to really truly honor the Lord is to be able, is to first plan ourselves back on that solid rock that can't be moved and just refresh our hearts with the promises of God and then believe that God is going to do a new thing. Trust him. Obviously, we're not to completely forget all that God has done in the past because he's done some great stuff. He has, there's, there's precedent in the Bible about taking stones and stones of remembrance, as it were, and, and, and moments in your life where God came through for you. Take that moment and, and make sure that you make a, a marker and, and remember what he's done. But don't just camp there. Don't just remember and focus on the things that he did in the past because we've got things to do in the future. If we're going to embrace and experience the new that God wants to do, we have got to look forward. I have a word that I want to put up on the screen there for you, and it's the word evolve, and it means to develop gradually, especially from a simple to a more complex form. God wants us to evolve. Our relationship with God should always be evolving. It should be changing. It should be, it should be deepening and broadening. It should, it, it should be going somewhere. But many of us have, have started a relationship with God and we've pushed the pause button. Maybe we've been overwhelmed with everything going on around us and we've stopped praising and we've stopped praying the way we used to. And so we add a little letter, the, the, the letter R to that word evolve, and we start revolving. We start going in circles. We're spinning our wheels, and we're wondering, why is my relationship with God not going anywhere? It's because God wants us to move forward. He wants us to evolve. He wants us to change. I so desperately want us to see change in the year 2021. If we're not evolving, 
It is a clear indication that we need to refresh our faith through prayer and praise and a new focus on God's promises. Let's look at one last scripture here in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse number 27. It says, O Lord of heaven's armies, God of Israel, I have been bold enough to pray this prayer to you because you have revealed all this to your servant, saying, I will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. You see, the promises of God are the true guide to the words that we pray and the songs we praise with. And when we return those to God with our lips, he leads us into the future that he has promised. Don't get distracted with the things going on around. Life is going forward. We are going forward because we believe God and his word. And he is not a man that he should lie. His word is forever settled in heaven. And I just pray that, that we would really re-embrace his word in a fresh way. Believe God. Believe God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for helping us to not just remember that you have been here and helped us in the past, but help us to focus our attention forward. Help us to reestablish our faith in your word. Help us to pray your word like like we used to. Help us to, to pray your word and praise with your word and usher in a new day, a new year, where you, Father, are lifted up. Jesus, where your name is spoken, where your word goes forth, where your love conquers, and Father, where you are glorified. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.